Our main story is the uncertainty facing thousands of British holidaymakers following the government's decision to impose a two-week quarantine on people travelling to the UK from any part of Spain, as well as its hugely popular island destinations. Travel companies say they are deeply disappointed that the Balearic and Canary Islands are included because they have not seen and been affected by the surge in cases of coronavirus uh, that have been seen in parts of the mainland in Spain. Indeed, the UK government went further tonight by advising against all but essential travel, not only to Spain, but to those islands as well. Spain, including those islands, is the most popular destination for Britons on their summer holidays, with more than 18 million visits last year. France was second and Italy third. Almost 10,000 flights were scheduled to fly from the UK to Spain between now and late August, which travel experts say translates to around 1.8 million affected passengers. Travel firms are warning that unless the quarantine policy is applied in a more focused way, firms will go out of business. Our transport correspondent, Tom Burridge, has spent the day at Stansted Airport. We can join him now. Well, Hugh, if people at home are struggling to keep up with the government's policy over quarantine for Spain, then they should take heart that major travel companies are too. This evening, the tour operator Jet2 cancelled all flights and holidays to mainland Spain until the middle of August. But within hours, they were forced to scrap all flights to the whole of Spain tomorrow and they promise another announcement in the morning. The ramifications of this change in policy are huge. Arriving back from Ibiza this afternoon and off the plane from Malaga. The sudden return of quarantine for those flying in from Spain is causing headaches. The rules are changing all the time, which is very difficult for people like ourselves. We were on the 65th uh, birthday celebration when this broke and it kind of shattered the day in a way because everyone then had problems with travel. So. To me, it feels like I was in a safer place where there was less cases and now I've come back here and now I'm kind of the one that's being quarantined on my own. Everyone else is out and about. I think there's an initial selfish reaction, but we need to remember the people that have died from COVID and families and that's so, As much as we feel gutted, I think it was very badly managed. When this lunchtime flight departed to Mallorca, the government was still advising that travel to the islands was OK. But by the time those on board reached their hotels, that too had changed. Now in line with the quarantine, the Foreign Office advises against all non-essential travel to the whole of Spain. We spoke to the Britain family before they boarded that flight, already confused why they'd have to quarantine. Well, when we looked the other day, there was 20 cases in Mallorca and we live in Hertfordshire and there was 46. So if you compare the two, it just seems really strange that they've not regionalised it. With more people heading off on holiday now, Stansted at least felt quite busy today. But don't be deceived by the air of normality at this airport. For the end of July, passenger numbers are still way down. And with the quarantine returning for people arriving from Spain, it's another bitter blow for travel companies. Today, the share price of airlines like Ryanair fell as tens of thousands of holidays were disrupted. But ministers insist travel restrictions should apply to every region of Spain. We've seen, of course, that the virus is most uh, rampant in the northeast of Spain, but it's also the case that incidence of the virus is rising across Spain. So, of course, it's an imposition on folk who were looking forward to their, their summer holidays, but I think most people recognise that uh, the most important thing that we need to do uh, is to work together across the United Kingdom to keep everyone safe and healthy. But the government is at odds with the aviation sector, which has already lost tens of thousands of jobs. We don't understand the approach the government's taken to this. It doesn't make much sense to us in terms of the approach we're taking in the UK, which is quite local, managing local outbreaks and transferring that approach to the way we, we manage the quarantine regime. We would expect the government to want to do that. We're fighting to protect people's jobs here. And companies like Jet2 are caught in an impossible situation. Their customers' precious trips away ruined. Tom Burridge, BBC News. Well, the Prime Minister of Spain, Pedro Sánchez, says the new quarantine decision is unfair and uh, he's seeking talks with the UK government to try to change its mind. He said Britain had made an error by considering the rate of coronavirus infection in Spain as a whole 
when most regions had a lower rate than the UK. The greatest concentration of infections is in the northeast of Spain, popular tourist areas in the south, in addition to the Canaries and the Balearic Islands, are reporting relatively low infection rates. Our Europe correspondent Gavin Lee reports now from Barcelona. Sun, sea and social distancing on the Golden Coast, the Costa Dorada. There's more room on the beach now here in the town of Salou. Locals say most of the tourists have stayed away from the worst affected region in Spain. And it's left those whose livelihoods depend on tourism fighting for survival. It's a cabaret life for Rodney Piper, a club owner and magician who employs a hundred staff. Right now, there's only enough work for eight. House of Illusion is not just my life, but it's all my family's life, it's all my workers' life, it's everyone who not only lives here, is now lost their jobs. We can't survive with this. It's an absolute nightmare. At Shanklisborg, Helen and her friend Julie have come here for a week in the sun after they thought it was safe to travel. Back home, Helen runs a pub in Wigan and says quarantine means more money lost. When we get home, we're going to have to quarantine. So, although we've already lost a lot over the last three to four months being locked down, when I get home, I'm going to have to quarantine for 14 days. And there's nothing else I can do. Away from the beach, Barcelona is Spain's most visited city, and authorities are sending out two messages to locals to minimise contact outside, to wear a mask in public, and to tourists to come here to enjoy themselves, that they have the situation under control. But on the city's main boulevard, Las Ramblas bears little resemblance to the hustle and bustle of summers gone by. Sergio has been running his newsstand for over 20 years. Even the day after the terror attack, there were 30 times more people than today. And now, with the quarantine imposed again in Britain, it's making a bad situation worse. Last orders in the city comes early now, with a nighttime curfew in place for bars and restaurants. 21-year-old Santiago says the new rule is vital. They have to take some strict measures to stop all this, all this virus. The UK government is making clear its citizens shouldn't be here unless it's essential. But for Spain, this is an unnecessary kick when the country is already struggling to get to its feet. To be clear, when it comes to the economy, 15% of Spain's gross domestic product comes from tourism. A large percentage of that comes from British tourists. The Spanish government has spent the day lobbying the British government to say not, not to include all of Spain, to allow it to be region by region. Now, that appears not to have worked because the British government has included the Spanish islands in areas that are warning British travellers not to go to. And tonight, Pedro Sanchez saying that he believes that's unfair and this is an error on the part of the UK. The political fallout is growing here. Gavin, many thanks again. Gavin Lee with the latest there in Barcelona. Well, ministers in London said they had no choice but to act rapidly and decisively to impose the new quarantine on people arriving in the UK from Spain, faced with the situation with uh, Spanish infection rates rising, but with different regions and territories of Spain reporting a wide variation in cases, our science editor David Schuchman looks at the relevant evidence. Since the very dark days in Spain earlier this year, the authorities have clamped down on the virus successfully. And they say it's under control, but there are new spikes of infection. So why did the UK government change its rules for travellers coming from Spain? Well, health officials noticed a rise in cases in a series of different regions in the country. They haven't released their assessment, but no one wants to repeat the way the virus reached the UK back in February. Trying to stop an introduction of new chains of transmission, given what happened back in the February half term, with less travellers coming back, I think it's a very prudent step to act very quickly. So after the change of policy on Spain, where next? What other countries might be added to the quarantine list? In theory, any country with a rise in infections could see new rules imposed on travellers. In France, for example, after a massive spike earlier this year, numbers came right down, but have since crept back up again to about 1,000 cases a day. In Germany, which was never badly affected, there's also been a slight increase, but only to about 300 cases a day. 
while Greece, which is widely praised for its handling of the virus, has also seen a very slight rise, but only to about 30 new cases every day. And if there are flare-ups, why involve whole countries rather than regions within them? Over the past fortnight, Catalonia, for example, has had more than 8,500 cases. But by contrast, the Balearic Islands have had only 92. So it said they should be allowed easier travel. And the islands are being treated differently by some countries, like the Netherlands. The UK government says it won't do that. But some experts think a regional approach could be feasible. Regional quarantines for islands is a possibility. I think regional within mainland countries, if you forgive the shorthand, so Catalonia or Galicia, I think that gets more difficult because then the borders are porous, people are moving in and out, tourists and others. Just when holidays are so desperately needed, these are nervous times because the virus is still around, which means we're going to see more spikes and more disputes over how to respond to them. David Shukman, BBC News. Well, our nightly update on the number of uh, deaths in the UK linked to COVID-19 uh, shows that in the latest 24-hour period, seven deaths were recorded. It's always lower after the weekend recording. Uh, that brings the total number for the UK so far to 45,759. And on average in the past week, 64 people have died every day from COVID-19. Well, let's uh, bring these uh, strands together on the story today with our chief political correspondent, Vicky Young, at Westminster. And throughout the day, Vicky, ministers were being urged to relax aspects of this policy. But what happened was they went in the other direction. Yeah, that's right. It does feel like there's been a bit of jostling behind the scenes over all of this. The day started with the Spanish tourism minister sounding pretty confident that the Spanish islands would actually be exempt from these quarantine rules. And there were some in government telling us that too. But as you say, here we are now with those travel rules actually being tightened. Now, why has the government done this? They are uh, defending their action. They say they are being cautious because ultimately it's about public health. They want to make sure that the UK stays as safe as possible. They don't want to go down the route of having these regional differences because actually they think it would just be more confusing. Now, the clear message from Downing Street today, no travel is risk-free. Now, that certainly might make people think again about foreign holidays uh, this year. And there is one man who can relate to this pretty well. That is the Transport Secretary, Grant Shapps. He went to Spain on Saturday morning knowing that restrictions might be put in place. We're now told he's coming home early on Wednesday to get back to work. But like hundreds of thousands of others, of course, he will have to quarantine. Vicky, many thanks again. Vicky Young with the latest uh, at Westminster.